are seeing another failed promise. But I think we have to go a bit further than just uh, <coughs> summing it up as a failed promise and try to understand why this has happened and why we should never have been optimistic in the first place. Um, by its very nature, the UN is as good as its member countries. Now, MONUSCO is a group that is composed of soldiers coming from very many different countries. Now, it means that every contingent of soldiers acts on the basis of authority from its own government. Now, that in itself constrains a multinational force from acting with force. You might find that maybe the Bangladeshis, uh, their government is not willing to commit them to fighting in Congo. Okay. Maybe the Russians, the same thing. So it's not only in Congo, but if you look at many other countries where multinational UN forces have been stationed, these peacekeeping forces, they have never been responsible for engaging in military action against any group. If you look at Sierra Leone, mm. they were there for many years. It took British forces to defeat the rebels in Sierra Leone after the UN troops had been there for many years. If you look at uh, Bosnia, same thing. The UN forces never did anything there. So this is pretty much what anybody who, who knows anything about the history of these UN peacekeeping troops would have predicted. Could there be any hidden agenda that we're seeing led to stand in the way of sustainable peace in the region? I don't know if there is a hidden agenda, but what uh, we now hear, that what we've been hearing increasingly, is that the two countries that came out with a great deal of determination to fight M23 are not willing to fight FDLR. So it would mean that it would need some other force to fight FDLR, but not the force that is in Congo, as we know it, the Force Intervention Brigade that fought M23. Initially, it was predicted that uh, FDLR is going to use this period yeah. to dis, I mean, to, to, to consolidate and grow stronger, yeah. especially in their military and political organization. Right. And at the end of the day, they will destabilize Rwanda mm. and the region. Mm. Uh, what, what's your take on that uh, prediction? Well, from what we've been hearing again, they have indeed used the last six months to consolidate, to recruit, mm. to arm themselves. Now, as to whether they are going to destabilize Congo, I think that that is guaranteed yep. because they've been doing it for the last 20 years. will still continue to constitute a threat to Rwanda's stability in the long term if they are not removed from close to Rwanda's border. And then there is uh, also this something interesting where FDLR requested for an additional six months, saying uh, that uh, the deadline they were given was unrealistic. Right. Is there any possibility that they could actually get the six months? It's very difficult to tell, but I think that there will be pressure on the UN or even MONUSCO to give them an additional six months by the same people who put pressure on the UN to give them the first six months. And as, we, as I've been telling you, there are actors in this region who are lobbying on behalf of FDLR. There are people who have described them as freedom fighters. Those are the people who engineered the first six months. And it's likely that they are going to attempt to engineer another six months for them. But my own prediction would be that even those additional six months will not see FDLR surrendering. Okay, you've cited all these examples where we saw the international community reluctant to come out and do anything, especially to ensure peace in a particular region. Right. In, in, in this particular case where we know that a lot has happened, they have been termed uh, uh, to do all those genocidal crimes, human rights abuses. Yeah. Why do you think the international community stays reluctant? The day FDLR is going to impact negatively on the interests of the big powers in the UN, that is when FDLR will be eliminated, or the day the big powers will decide that they are going to give space to other determined forces to go in and eliminate FDLR, that's when FDLR will be eliminated. But also don't forget that the MONUSCO force mm -hmm. is a very big force. It is a huge employer. It employs many people. It employs far more international people than Africans. I mean, how many Rwandans work for MONUSCO? How many Congolese work for MONUSCO? The people working for MONUSCO don't come from Africa. They come from further afield. They spend billions of dollars in Congo. There is not much of an incentive to fight FDLR, which is the very basis for their existence in Congo. And unless 
FDLR attacks UN forces, you are not going to get UN forces going after FDLR.